Yeah. All right. Testing. Very good. Good sir. All right. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom, Judah. And welcome to Shabbat, the seventh day Sabbath. God created everything he needed to create in six days, according to Beersheet, Genesis. And on the seventh day, he ceased from creation. He sat. He rested. And so, um, as we go forward in the Torah, of the first five books of the uh, Old Testament, we find that when Israel gets uh, to the desert and on the way to the promised land, God gives them manna to sustain them. And he commands them to collect a certain amount of manna each day. If they collect over and, and they uh, it, it spoils. But on the sixth day, he commands them to collect twice as much so that on the seventh day, they do not go out to collect manna. They rest, they cease from doing what they nor normally do, excuse me. And as John is fondly saying, the Sabbath day is on God. Because he provides for us more than enough on the six so we don't have to go out there's no need to go out to earn the money to go to the store to buy the food it's right here on the table and in jewish household they prepare enough so that they do not have to do any cooking it's uh if you go on youtube you'll find uh, several um women who orthodox women who show you what they do to prepare for the sabbath and they really start after the uh, after the uh, seventh day, uh, at the sundown Saturday, almost like on Sunday, they start preparing, especially the bread, because uh, I have started making sourdough bread, and sourdough bread takes several days to make, and sometimes with the challah, you can prepare it, uh, some prepare it and freeze it so that they have enough. So there's there are many steps to preparing for the Shabbat so that you do not have to uh, do any preparation on that Shabbat day and mainly we, it centers around the food where they will, will have uh, a a warming plate or our stove has a Shabbat mode that you can keep uh, things in the uh, oven and it stays warm for the Shabbat so that you don't have to warm food up and so and again I try to prepare all of the foods that we're going to eat on to uh, on this evening to Saturday uh, to Saturday evening, everything that we need is here and prepared. So uh, we can sit and we can hear what the Father has to say to us about the coming week. It's our time to be refilled and it's our time to spend time with the God because God, because it's an appointment that he made. He made the appointment. So it means that he's going to be here whether we're with him or not. And so the rest of the world hasn't kind of caught on to it yet. They kind of haven't caught on to God's uh, so-called Jewish holidays are his days that he and he invites all to participate even when you're talking about Israel and they are they are doing all of these uh, uh, feast days and it talks about the stranger even the stranger takes part in these feast days so the Shabbat is a time when God I believe wants to uh, regenerate us from the long week that we've had. We need to unplug from social media. We need to just sit here with the, him and uh, read his word and see what he has for us. And so I'm so excited to see what the Torah portion is and how we apply it to our lives. And uh, the Torah portion to, today is called Shalach, Shalach Lecha. And it's taken from Numbers 13. Let me get my, um, open it here. Numbers 13, 13.1. Um, okay, good. I'm there. Numbers 13.1 through 15.41. And in my Torah, it's divided. And when I say my Torah, you know, there are all kinds of uh, 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 books on the Torah commentary. Mine happens to be, it says, the Torah, a modern commentary edited by Gunther Plout. And this is from, let me tell you where it's, 
1981. So that when I say that, that's, that's the Torah that I'm using. Uh, it has the Hebrew in it. And in this uh, particular, and I'm going to read it there because I have this written. It's divided into uh, 14, 42. Hold on a minute. Let me just. Uh, it looks like it's divided into two parts. Let me just make sure. Well, let me just read from our Torah. The first one is trial and condemnation, Numbers 13, 1 through 14, 45. The second part is various laws on fringes, Numbers 15, 1 through 41. So it is two parts that it's divided into. And it begins, Ve'yedeve Adonai el Moshe l'mor, shalach lecha, adashim, ve'yitro et aretz kana'an, asher ani notan levne Israel, ish echad, ish echad, lemata avotav, tish lahu, kol nisi, Behem. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to scout the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelite people. Send one man from each of their ancestral tribes, each one a chieftain among them. John. Psalm 5. Give, give ear to my word, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry my King, and my God. But for unto thee I will pray, uh, unto thee will I pray. My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayers unto thee, and I will look up. For thou art not, for thou art not a God that has pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hateth all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak blessings. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of my mercy, multitude of thy mercy. In thy fear will I worship towards thy holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. May, may, they, may thy way straighten be st straight before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouths. Their inward part is very wicked. Their throats is as open is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongues. Uh, destroy them, destroy thou them, O Lord God, lest they fall by their own counsel. Cast them out of their out of the multitude of thy transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou hast defended them. Lest they al lest let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor wilt thou compass him with a shield. This is the word of the Lord. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, may your kingdom come, and may your will be done. We give thanks to you, Lord God, for you have brought us, Lord, into your Shabbat. This same day that you created it at the time of creation, and blessed it, and in process of time called all men, even our brethren the Jews, to rest on this day to acknowledge the God who has delivered them out of the house of bondage, to rest, to be renewed, to worship and give thanks and praise, 
to the God who show who remembers his promises and shows his mercy and kindness and we give thanks for it for you have kept your promise with our brother in the Jews and through Christ Jesus Lord who has freed us from the house of sin and bondage and has freed us as well we give thanks and because of what he has done we seek to draw near to you and pray that you will draw us closer to you that we may be one with you and our brother in the Jews and in time Christ will come again and bring us into a dwelling he has prepared a place that is that was not made by the, the hand of man but by the hand of God and he will invite us there and we await that day Lord and the spirit that remains and keeps us we give thanks and we ask you Lord to come and draw close to us in this dwelling that you have made available to us that we may be renewed we may grow deeper and understand the ways of God and what he has plans for us and we give thanks Lord for your great kindness and mercy and in the name of the Christ we pray Amen Barukata Adonai Elohedu Melo Halam Amotse Lekamin Sawad. Blessed art you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gives us bread from the earth. Rukata Adonai Elohedu Melohalam Bere Pri Hagapem. Blessed art you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gives us the fruit of the vine. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.
just to clean my glasses here. <laughs> Take our first part is numbers 13, 1 through 14, 45. Pace it, clean your glasses. And it starts. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Send men to scout the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelite people. Send one man from each of their ancestral tribes, each one a chieftain among them. So Moses, by the Lord's command, sent them out from the wilderness of Paran, all the men being leaders of the Israelites. And these were their names from the tribes of Reuben, Shamua, Shamua, son of Zachor, from the tribe of Simeon, Shaphat, son of Hori, from the tribe of Judah, Caleb, son of Jephu, Jephuthune, from the tribe of Issachar, Egal, son of Yosef, from the tribe of Ephraim, Hosea, son of Nun, from the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, son of Raphu, from the tribe of Zebulon, Gadiel, son of Sodi. From the tribe of Joseph, namely the tribe of Manasseh, Gadi, son of Susi. From the tribe of Dan, Amiel, son of Gimali. From the tribe of Asher, Setor, son of Mikael. From the tribe of Naphtali, Nabi, son of Vopsi. From the tribe of Gad, Geluel, son of Maki. Those were the names of the men whom Moses sent to scout the land. But Moses changed the name of Hosea, son of Nun, to Joshua, Joshua. When Moses sent them to scout the land of Canaan, he said to him, Go up there unto the Negev and on into the hill country and see what kind of country it is. Are the people who dwell in it strong or weak, few or many? In the country in which they dwell, good or bad, are the towns they live in open for fortified, open or fortified? Is the soil rich or poor? Is it wooded or not? And take pains to bring back some of the fruit of the land. Now it happened to be the season of the first ripe grapes. They went up and scouted the land from the wilderness of Zen to Rehob at Lebo Hamath. They went up into the Negev and came to Hebron where lived Ahiman, Shechai, and Talmai, the Anakites. Now Hebron was founded seven years before Zon of Egypt. They reached the Wadi Eshkol, and there they cut down a branch with a single cluster of grapes. It had to be borne on a carrying frame by two of them, and some of the pomegranates and figs. That place was named the Wadi Eshkol because of the cluster that the Israelites cut down there. At the end of 40 days, they returned from scouting the land. They went straight to Mount to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the wilderness of Paran. And they made their report to them and to the whole community as they showed them the fruit of the land. This is what they told him. We came to the land you sent us to. It does indeed flow with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. However, the people who inhabit the country are powerful and the cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the Anakites there and the Amalites, Amalekites dwell in the Negev region. Hittites, Yebusites, and Amorites inhabit the hill country and Canaanites dwell by the sea along the Jordan. Caleb hushed the people before Moses and said, let us by all means go up. We shall gain possession of it, for we shall surely overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We cannot attack that people, for it is stronger than we. Thus they spread calumnies among the Israelites, among the land they had scouted, saying, The country that we transverse and scouted and one that devours its settlers. All the people that we saw in it are men of great size. We saw the Nephilim there. The Anakites are part of the Nephilim, and we looked like grasshoppers to ourselves, and so we must have looked to them. The whole community broke into loud cries, and the people wept that night. All the Israelites railed against Moses and Aaron. If only we had died in the land of Egypt. The whole community shouted at them, or if only we might be, die in the wilderness. Why is the Lord taking us to the land to fall by the sword? 
our wives and children will be carried off. It would be better for us to go back to Egypt. And they said to one another, Let us head back for Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembled congregation of the Israelites. And Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Yephuneh, of who of those who had scouted the land, rent their clothes, and exhorted the whole Israelite community. The land that we transverse and scouted is exceedingly good land. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us into the land, a land that flows with milk and honey, and give it to us. Only you must not rebel against the Lord. Have no fear then of the people of the country, for they are our prey. Their protection has departed from them, but the Lord is with us. Have no fear of them. As the whole community threatened to pelt them with stones, the presence of the Lord appeared in the tent of the meeting to all the Israelites. And the Lord said to Moses, How long will this people spurn me? How long will they have no faith in me, despite all the signs that I have performed in their midst? I will strike them with pestilence and disown them. I will make of you a nation far more numerous than they. But Moses said to the Lord, when the Egyptian from whom Smith you brought up this people in your might hear the news, they will tell it to the inhabitants of that land. Now they have heard that you, O Lord, are in the midst of this people, that you, O Lord, appear in plain sight when your cloud rests over them and when you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. If then you slay this people to a man, the nations who have heard your fame will say, It must be because the Lord was powerless to bring that people into the land, which he had promised them on oath, that he slaughtered them in the wilderness. Therefore, I pray, let my Lord's forbearance be great, as you have declared, saying, The Lord slow to anger and abounding in kindness, forgiving iniquity and transgression, yet not remitting all punishment, but visiting the iniquity of fathers upon the children, upon the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I pray, the iniquity of this people, according to their great kindness, as you have forgiven this people over ever since Egypt. And the Lord said, I pardon, as you have asked. Nevertheless, as I live, as the Lord's presence fills the whole world, none of the men who have seen my presence and the signs that I have performed in Egypt and in the wilderness and who have tried me these many times, have disobeyed me, shall the, see the land that I promised an oath to their fathers. None of them, uh, or none of those who spurn me shall see it, but my servant Caleb, because he was imbued with a different spirit and remained loyal to me, him will I bring into the land which he entered, and his offspring shall hold it as a possession. Now that Amalekites and the Canaanites occupy the valleys, starting out then tomorrow and march into the wilderness by the way of the Sea of Reeds. The Lord spoke further to Moses and Aaron, How much longer shall the wicked community keep muttering against me? Very well, I have heeded the incessant muttering of the Israelites against me. Say to them, As I live, says the Lord, I will do to you just as you have urged me. In this very wilderness, shall your carcasses drop of all of you who were recorded as your various lists from the ages of 20 up. You who mutter against me, not one shall enter the land in which I swore to settle you, save Caleb son of Yephuneh and Joshua son of Nun. Your children who you said would be carried off, these will I allow to enter. They shall know the land that you have rejected, but your carcasses shall drop in this wilderness, while your children roam the wilderness for forty years, suffering for your faithlessness, and the last of your carcasses is down uh, in the wilderness. You shall bear your punishment for forty years, corresponding to the number of days, forty days, that you have scouted the land, a year for each day. Thus you shall know what it means to throp me. I, the Lord, have spoken. Thus will I do to all that wicked band that has banded together against me. In this very wilderness they shall die to the last man. As for the men whom Moses sent to scout the land, 
those who came back and caused the whole community to mutter against him by spreading calumnies against the land. Those who spread such calumnies about the land died of plague by the will of the Lord. Of those men who had gone to scout the land, only Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, survived. When Moses repeated these words to all the Israelites, people were overcome by grief. Early next morning, they set out toward the crest of the hill country, saying, We are prepared to go up to the place that the Lord has spoken of, for we were wrong. But Moses said, Why do you transgress the Lord's command? This will not succeed. Do not go up, lest you be routed by your enemies. For the Lord is not in your midst. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites will be there to face you, and you will fall by the sword, inasmuch as you have turned from following the Lord, and the Lord will not be with you. Yet, defiantly, they marched to the crest of the hill country, though neither the Lord's Ark of the Covenant nor Moses stared from the camp. And the Amalekites and the Canaanites who dwelt in that hill country came down and dealt them a shattering blow at Harm at uh, Har Har Ha Ha Har Ma. Mm, okay, this is um, I guess this is the story of the sin of the spies, which mm -hmm. is per pretty much well known. Yes. Um, and a couple of things of interest to to bring out here. Yes. Now some say that um well let me I guess kind of start at the beginning when Moses sent the spies and I guess we'll learn later on that it was their idea to to go to, to go for the spies, but um they did go and God did say so you can go if you want to but you don't have to because he promised them right off the bat that they were going to possess the land. But Moses kind of anticipated bad news when uh, what would occur or that their report would be bad news. And in fact, what Moses wanted them to do was to go up and find the weaknesses and the best way to attack this land, which makes sense. But what they did, they ended up coming up with a report about the land or, or their opinion about the land and 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 being negative about it but their idea wasn't to go up and give a report per se mm -hmm. or for their opinion they were to go <coughs> up and report on the weaknesses of the land but I think Moses um, when they came to him and, and made this request I think he kind of anticipated bad news uh, or that they weren't going to live up to what uh, what the request was. And I say that because he changed changed Joshua's name at that time. Mm -hmm. Now Joshua's name initially was uh, Hosea. Ho Hosea, but I think in English, uh, God has helped, which is past tense. So he changed his name to a future tense name, which is God, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I guess we also call it salvation. Yes, Yehoshua. Yeah, but it, it, can, it also means God will help. Yes. So, um, and I, I think with them going through the land saying God will help us was to try and encourage them and not dissuade them from uh, from going in. But uh, I guess they just they just couldn't translate it. So another thing, when they went through the land, I got a couple of things here. Um, they the the, uh, the fruit of the land was huge, mm -hmm. and at, this doesn't say it, but some of the commentary says that uh, uh, as far as the grapes were concerned, it took eight men to carry it, and one man took pomegranates and one took figs, and what they were trying to do, well, actually Moses asked them to bring the fruit back. You know, good grief, you don't have to bring all that much back. In fact, they were saying 10 men were you were employed to bring the fruit back. Well, there was 12 men that went. Two of them didn't bring anything. And some attribute that to Joshua and Caleb. They could care less about it. The reason the other folks brought the fruit 
was to intimidate the Jewish people, saying, hey, if this fruit is huge, those guys are huge too. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we can't beat them. Now, it was also kind of funny, it was saying, they were trying to say, uh, the people were dying, and two ways of looking at that, um, 12 people walking in a, around in a country is going to be spotted. So what God was doing was having funerals so they could walk through the land and spot land without any difficulty. They interpreted that as there's a lot of disease in the land because saying the land is eating up the people. They attributed that to, to disease. But it couldn't be disease because if it were disease, the fruit wouldn't be at, at, at so abundant and lush. Uh, also, if it were disease, you don't have funerals with diseases. You have, you don't have burials, or you have mass burials. Mm -hmm. And even during our time of COVID, a lot of people just didn't get buried. You didn't have funerals. Um, there was cremation, um, just burials without funerals. Right. You just didn't have. For diseases, you don't have funerals. And they took that information, or took what they observed, I guess it's still information, and they twisted it to fit their narrative. They didn't want to go up. This was also rulers, people these these are the people who would need to have need to find jobs later on once they were in the land. But uh, I guess they didn't want to find jobs. They don't want to they don't want to start working here. Um, but the land was rich and lush, and they, they misread the data. If God had helped them through um, parting of the Red Sea, he was feeding them with manna, defeated Pharaoh's army, um, gave them water, gave them food, and this is the God who has shown himself to be faithful. But they took the data and, and they misinterpreted it and they, and they slandered God, which was a big mistake. Right. Now, who was Caleb? Now, some people tend to think or tend to say that Caleb's wife was Miriam. And I think Josephus was the one that points that out. The Torah doesn't really say. So, did Caleb take a cue from what happened to Miriam a few uh the, in the last parsha, and he stood up for them. He got a, he was courageous, and he spoke. He was he was very outspoken. Right. And uh, he wasn't afraid. He wasn't intimidated by them. Um, some say he was brazen, and he tried to encourage the people to uh, say, "No, we we can do this." And what did he get for his effort? Uh, one one in, one teacher puts out something interesting. Um, he said, what did he get from his for his effort? But really nothing. Now, he did go into the promised land, but in the end, did he, did he persuade anyone? No, not really. So, but Caleb did put through the effort, and God rewards us based on effort, not necessarily result, but effort. Um, he also went on to say that, uh, you know, our job is to to put forth an effort. We don't have to go out and um, try and get someone's scalp or just push, push and push religion on them. But we have to put in the effort. Uh, and we shouldn't be just a nuisance in our religious conviction. Uh, we have to put forth the effort. Now, uh, Joshua did speak up, but I think Caleb was the one who was um, the, the outspoken one. The one other thing here is, what was the punishment? And one, uh, I guess the Hebrew Bible read it a little bit different. Um, for And it says, um, oh, let me back up one little bit. This happened on the 9th of Ab, Tisha B'Av, mm -hmm. and history reports that the first temple and the second temple were destroyed, <coughs> destroyed. On, on the first and second, uh, uh, the first and the second temple were destroyed on Tisha B'Av. 
So the spin of the spin of the sin of the spy still reverberates down until today. And some even say even World War One or World War Two was started at about that time. I guess I could look it up and see it was may have been fairly close. But what was their penalty? On one day of each year, they would be punished. And that would happen for 40 years. Mm -hmm. Now some say it was, um, it would be 49 years. Um, the last group uh, received grace and they didn't die. Um, because they would have to have spent an, another year um, in the wilderness. But to be exactly 40 years. Um, what happened, they say what happened on that one night Tishbah, anyone that was 20 years old or over would, would dig their own grave, they get in the grave and if they were spared, they walked out, if they weren't, they just buried them. But the punishment lasted was one day every year for 40 years. So one day per year, one day per year. And uh, not necessarily 40 days because of the 40 years. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just the way the, the Torah actually uh, uh, verbalizes it. So this, this was a great sin. Uh, what had to happen uh, was repentance. Moses prayed for him. Mm -hmm. This was even as bad. Well, this was worse than the golden calf because here they didn't go, in, go into the land. The golden calf, they were still set to go in. Mm -hmm. But here, they, this, this was it. Uh, I think sometimes God said they transgressed at least ten times, but <clears throat> I don't think it really goes into detail what the ten times were. Uh, I know about the water, bread, the meat, um, but I don't know about the ten. I, maybe I should just go through a little bit more careful and write up those ten times. Um, what else do I have? Now, oh, by the way, when they, this is something a little interesting. When they started out, they started out with something good. They were saying something good about the land. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but then they mixed in, uh, started mixing in a, a lie with the truth. Right. And the way you, you try and convince a person of a lie, you got to mix, up to, to make something convincing, or to tell a lie, you got to mix a little truth in. Yes, it. like Satan did in Garden of Eden. Yeah. If, if, you, if you tell a lie and it's 100% a lie, people will smoke it out. Mm -hmm. But in order to make a lie convincing, you got to mix a little truth in right. with it. And I guess it's even best if you throw the, tr the truth in first. And that makes it even better. And you bring, the, as I said, the fruit they brought was back, brought back. <laughs> was to intimidate the people. You didn't need to bring, uh, uh, hey, you, some fruit they didn't bring back, and some they did. They didn't bring back pomegranate. Uh, I'm sorry, they didn't bring back olive, and they did not bring, um, oh, honey, but I don't know if honey was, that, that was something else they didn't bring, any palm trees. But they brought the fruit back for a different purpose, and they really, there was no need to bring uh, huge amounts like that. They, they could have been smaller amounts. But if you want to intimidate the people who didn't want them to go in, then um, you have to do that. Caleb also was from the true tribe of Judah. Judah was the big uh, conversion, conversion there. Because uh, Judah turned around, so maybe the what Judah had done earlier still reverberates through it. One other thing here: Joseph had two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess they they both sided with the group, but um, Manasseh is associated with Joseph. While it used, mentioned the name of Ephraim, and he's sided with uh, the son of Nun. That was this. Um, oh, you know what? That that is almost in the same tribe where uh, where um, um, uh, Joshua is, mm -hmm. but it doesn't ascribe Joseph's name to him. 
Uh, and some say the reason why um, they didn't ascribe Joseph's name to him is because Joseph, you know, well, Joseph was a talebearer. You know, J Joseph gave bad reports on his brother. And that's why Manasseh's name is associated with him um, and not the other brother. So I'm, I, I guess I don't understand all of that. But um, uh, they could have described him as the same way as Ephraim, but they did not. And I think that's all I have. Okay. It's very interesting. <clears throat> I think that if you brought up that that Moses did not send them out, they made the decision to go. Mm -hmm. Interesting thing that happened when I went to Israel in March of the community that I was visiting, Kedumim, it was set up not to be a walled um, city because the founder um, studied Torah and found out <clears throat> that if it was wall, that it was really weak. When it's spread out, it's strong. And so, um, um, their fear was misplaced anyway, because, again, they were saying that God could not deliver it. Mm -hmm. Not that they could. God could not do it. That was their greatest sin. But And so, if, if we carry it to what we where we are today, we must remember that God is the one who created everything from nothing. So is there anything too hard for him? God can do whatever he chooses. It's we who limit him and his ability to do anything. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, one thing in my prayer group, we were talking uh, about Jesus, and Jesus said that when he, when he left and went away, that uh, he said that we would do much more than he did when he was here. And in and, and our prayer group, we started giving examples. One of the things that Jesus did that, uh, that I think people will find really miraculous, he walked on water. Now, I don't hear too many people walking on water nowadays. Mm -hmm. Is it because we don't believe? Because Jesus said we would do much more than he did. So... Uh, maybe we are limiting him in these last days, but maybe in the last days we will uh, have to, and I believe we will have to truly learn what trust in God is. Because everything is failing right now. Mm -hmm. Everything is failing. Our money, our food, uh, you name it, everything is failing. And there is no human solution. There, the arm of flesh is useless to us at this point. And so, uh, as Joshua proclaimed, um, for, uh, and I think I'm going to, I'm, I'm not sure if the Hop Torah is uh, this part of Joshua, but I think we may have to read part of the Hop Torah. If not that, I'll read from Joshua um, what he uh, said, um, which I love, and I'm going to find it. Um, why are you doing your next explanation? I'm trying in my Bible I'm trying to find the Hav Torah. Uh, the Hav Torah is from um, Joshua. Excuse me, uh, Joshua. Let me for on Joshua two one through twenty four, and uh, so we um, we may read part of that. Uh, or as I said, um, um, but anyway, okay, so the second part of the Torah portion is entitled Various Laws and Fringes, uh, and it's from Numbers 15, 1, it says here 1 through 41, and I had written 45, so 1 through 41, uh, 41, okay, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the Israelite people and say to them, When you enter the land which I am giving you to settle in, and would present an offering by fire to the Lord from the herd or flock, from the flock, be it burnt offering or sacrifice, in the fullness of a vow explicit utter, explicitly uttered, or a free will offering, 
or at your fixed occasions, producing an odor pleasing to the Lord. The person who presents the offering to the Lord shall bring as a meal offering a tenth of a measure of choice flour with a quarter hand of oil mixed in. You shall also offer with the burnt offering of the sacrifice a quarter of a hand of wine as a libation for each sheep. In the case of a ram, you shall present as a meal offering two tenths of a measure of choice flour with a third of a hen of oil mixed in and a third of a hen of wine as a libation as an offering of pleasing odor to the Lord and if it is an animal from the herd that you offer to the Lord as a burnt offering or as a sacrifice in the fulfillment of a vow explicitly uttered or as an offering of well-being there shall be offered a meal offering along with the animal three-tenths of a measure of choice flour with a half of a hen of oil mixed in and as a libation you shall offer a hen of wine these being offerings by fire a pleasing odor to the Lord thus shall be done with each ox with each ram with any sheep or goat as many as you offer you shall do thus with each one as many as there are every citizen when presenting an offering by fire a pleasing odor to the Lord shall do so with them. And when throughout the ages a stranger who has taken up residence with you or one who lives among you would present an offering by fire a pleasing odor to the Lord, as you do, so shall it be done by the rest of the congregation. There shall be one law for you and for the resident stranger. It shall be a law for all time throughout the ages you and the stranger shall be alike before the Lord. The same ritual, the same rule shall apply to you and to the stranger who resides among you. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the Israelite people and say to them, When you enter the land to which I am taking you, and you eat of the bread of the land, and you shall set some aside as a gift to the Lord, as the first yield of your baking, you shall set aside a loaf as a gift. You shall set it aside as a gift, like the gift from the threshing floor. You shall make a gift to the Lord with the first yield of your baking throughout the ages. If you unwittingly fail to observe any one of the commandments which the Lord has declared to Moses, anything that the Lord has enjoined upon you through Moses from the day that the Lord gave the commandment and on through the ages, if this was done unwittingly through the inadvertence of the community, the whole community shall present one bull of the herd as a burnt offering of pleasing odor to the Lord with its proper meal offering and one he goat as a sin offering. The priest shall make expiation for the whole Israelite community and they shall be forgiven for it was an error and for their error they have brought their offering an offering by fire to the Lord and their sin offering before the Lord. The whole Israelite community and the stranger residing among them shall be forgiven, for it happened to the entire people through error. In case it is an individual who has sinned unwittingly, he shall offer a she-goat in its year as a sin offering. The priest shall make expiation before the Lord on behalf of the person who erred, for he sinned unwittingly, making such expiation for him that he may be forgiven for the citizen among the Israelites, for the stranger who resides among them. You shall have one ritual for anyone who acts in error. But the person, be he citizen or stranger, who acts defiantly, reviles the Lord, that person shall be cut off from among his people, because he has spurned the word of the Lord and violated his commandment. That person shall be cut off, he bears his guilt. Once, when the Israelites were in the wilderness, they came upon a man gathering wood on the Sabbath. Those who found him as he was gathering wood brought him before the Moses and Aaron and the whole community. He was placed in custody where it had, for it had not been specified what should be done to him. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, the man shall be put to death. The whole community shall pelt him with stones outside the camp. So the whole community took him outside the camp and stoned him to death as the Lord had commanded Moses. The Lord said to Moses as follows, Speak to the Israelite people and instruct them to make for themselves fringes on the corners of their garments.
Throughout the ages, let them attach a cord of blue to the fringe at each corner. That shall be your fringe. Look at it and, and recall all the commandments of the Lord and observe them so that you do not follow your heart and eyes in your lustful urge. Thus you shall be reminded to observe all my commandments and to be holy to your God. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I, the Lord, your God. Well, strong stuff here. Yeah, yeah the uh, first one I think we've talked about a few times, well, more than a few times, about the fellows picking up sticks. Yes. Uh, uh, gathering sticks. Um, it is funny, it is right in the, um, right after the, the sin of the spies and their repentance and then their willingness to go in into the land and, and, and battle. Well, God told them to go into the land. They said no. He, they uh, repented and still wanted to go and wanted to go out, wanted to go to battle anyway. And God said no. So they ignored him a second time. So this time the guy is picking up sticks and they ask God what they should do and God says, uh, stone it. Now my thinking is, I, I'm still convinced of it, that this man knew what he was doing and he knew what was going to happen. And, uh, or he was hoping these things would happen to him. And this was to get them back on track. Because if they were to say, now we're not going to stone them again. They are to they're just not listening to God at all. Um, and it, it would only go downhill from here. So I think he's setting himself up to put them back on track for obedience to God. Mm -hmm. And God also, then after this follows the commandments of the uh, Talit. And they're to remember God's commandment because the, technically they are forgetting God's commandments. They're not listening to listening mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. So this is an encouragement for them to get back to the land to remember God's commandments. Yes. And he also says why? Because he brought you out of Egypt to be your God. That's and and that's why you should remember these things, not to ignore him. Now the other the, the, the chapter started out with uh, commandments that they were to follow once they were in the land. Mm -hmm. So I don't think these really applied to in the wilderness, but they applied in the land. And uh, one of the things I forgot to mention about the second, the first section, um, it, we're, we're, as far as the people who were, uh, as far as the men folks who were 20 years old and up, upward, some were saying that was about uh, 600,000. So if you were to divide that by the 40 years, you're talking about by every night, every year, 15,000 people died, except for that last year. And that group probably got, um, got grace, uh, unless you do the, read the verse a different way. So about 15,000 people died every year in the wilderness and some say on that particular night but getting back to the uh, the offerings they're a repeat of the other offerings even in the land of Israel the offerings are designed for people who make unintentional for unintentional sin it's not for deliberate sin so these are unintentional for deliberate sin it's repentance not not offerings and um That's all I have for that. Okay. Well, that comes to the end of the Torah portion. And this um, this is exciting. I think the Torah portions are, are exhibiting a lot of information. Um, I think... Um, let's see if there's one thing I want to bring out. Um... I guess, the, I mean, God is very specific 
Um, God, and God is real about how he wants to be worshipped. Um, and and what he requires of us. And he is long-suffering. He's definitely long-suffering. Mm -hmm. So, as we move forward, and we, we are like almost midway into the 16th of June, past the middle, that we're going into the High Holy Days soon. We're, we're coming up to God's uh, High Holy Days. And one of the things that he reiterates throughout this, he talks about the stranger and there being one law, even for the stranger. And I want people to hear that. What he's saying is, if we consider ourselves strangers from the Commonwealth of Israel, this is talking about us. There's one law for Israel and for the stranger. There is nothing different. And so we, again, should be meeting um, God on these appointments that he sets for us and following his law, including the seventh day Sabbath. That's the beginning of things. So uh, that's what I got from this this week. Mm -hmm. So as we go to the Parsha for next week, Korach. Very interesting. And that's going to be taken from number 16.1 through 18.32. And in my Torah, it's divided into two parts. The first part being uh, uh, Korach. The Rebellion of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram from Numbers 16, 1 through 17, 15. And the second part is of priest, Levites, and Israelites. And that's set number 17, 16 through, uh, number 17, 16 to 18, 32. And it begins in number 16, 1, with the Yakak Korak, Bain Yitzahar, Bain Kahat, Bain Kahat, Bain Levi, Ve Dayton, Ve Aviram, Bine Eliav, Ve On, Bain Pelat, Bine Reuben. Now Korak, son of Ishar, son of Kohat, son of Levi, betook himself along with Dathan and Abiram, son of Eliab, and On, son of Pelat, descendants of Reuben. Reuben. So this is going to be very interesting uh, next week in our study of the rebellion of Korak. <laughs> very interesting. So we have done as God has commanded and I'm looking forward to the Shabbat because uh, uh, we are very intent on doing what God has said to stop from creation to stop and to worship and adore him and to sit and rest with him and again if we consider ourselves strangers although I consider ourselves members of the commonwealth of Israel we still are bound by the same laws as the Jewish people and so we are um, sitting, we're resting on the seventh day, and we are studying from the Torah, and it's enriching us. And we're plugging in because we have been sorely depleted during this past week. But God is giving us what we need in order to move forward during the next week. And so we just are so excited at, at what God is doing at this point in time because we are definitely in the end times. Um, and, and we should be looking up for our Redeemer uh, because things are happening just that fast within the world. And, but we should, again, not be afraid. Uh, the thing that uh, in my prayer group that we reiterated last night, I had a prayer group and this, and this afternoon. And this afternoon, um, the word was we should at least uh, do uh, pray in the spirit for three hours a day. That's how close we is we are. And then one of the members, she, oh, she, she really explained um what the scriptures when it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood and then there's a scripture in revelation that says the enemy seeks to wear out the saints of the most high and my friend today talked about when people are wrestling you're trying to tire your opponent out and that's what the ultimate enemy is trying to do tire us out by throwing everything at us daily i mean 
it, it's coming so fast that it really does tire us out. But we concluded that the way not to get tired is to stand on the word. To speak the word as, as Jesus or Yeshua did when the devil was tempting him for 40 days. And also to stand on the word and not let the enemy get away with what he did to Eve and, uh, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden when he said to them, did God really say that? And we can rest on God's word by studying the Torah so we can repeat the Torah to the enemy as he, we are wrestling with him. No, this is what the Torah says. And that's why this Torah uh, that we studied uh, today uh, of Sh uh, Shalach is important. Because, again, we are parroting what God is saying, what he requires of mankind. So there's no doubt this is what he's requiring. And that's why we must stay in his Torah. So that when we wrestle with, uh, uh, say, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the powers of, uh, 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 powers mm -hmm. of, in dark places or high places. Mm-hmm. All right, this song I, I got today, um, when we were in Israel, we sang this to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, in Kedumim, we sang this and we sang this when we were preparing for the trip. And it's not these exact words, we're going to sing, um, it's the, the way it's, uh, they arranged it, the musician arranged it at Fellowship, uh, was the, the men would start out and then the women, and then they would all come together. Uh, but we, uh, like in the parentheses, um, uh, I'm gonna. Uh, I'll tell you. You sing. You start singing. Well, tell you what we'll do. On going through the first time, we will sing together. But going through the second time, you will start out singing, and then mm. I start out singing what's in parentheses, mm. and then we join together. Um, so it's a man and woman, and, and it's the voices that you're. Um, 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 bring it together, but we'll sing it together uh, so that you will get the um, tune of it. Okay. Sing, sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah. Sing not exactly uh I'm, I'm singing it for memory the way it should be so i tell you what you do we're going to start again and you start out and then i'll join and then we basically we're just doing the first four lines so you start sing hallelujah to the sing lord hallelujah to the lord sing hallelujah to the lord sing hallelujah to the sing hallelujah sing hallelujah sing hallelujah to the lord very good you got it good very good you did very good oh, thank you yes Amen. and so we sing to the lord and we are so excited to be with him um on this day where he will refill us uh, from what the last week took from us and that we are we have concluded with certainty that as we go forward waiting on Messiah to return that there is no um, help from flesh the arm of man is useless the only person who can help us is the person of Yeshua HaMashiach who represents the God of Israel is the, our only hope, our only salvation. That's who we put our faith in as we move forward through the days to wait upon Messiah returning. We place our total faith in the God of Israel in the name of Yeshua, our elder brother who gave his life so that we could go boldly before the throne of grace who covered our sins. And we, if, if we accept his death, then our sins are covered and then we can go, then we are clean. We are clean because we accept the covering of Yeshua's death 
and suffering. So we boldly, we can, we can go like it was in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve met with God face to face. We can go meet with God face to face because of our elder brother, Yeshua, who, whose, whose death, who's the death of a perfect lamb gave us the right to go. If we accept his death and acknowledge it, his death and suffering, and remember that he rose again on the third day, if we accept that, then we are covered. So we thank God for our covering because we, we, we don't have to go through a, a priest. We can go boldly before the throne of grace, boldly before the king of kings. And he will not deny us because we have a covering. He will not deny us. It's not like when Esther had to go before the king and she said, uh, you don't go before the king unless he calls you. And her, by her going before the king, she risked death. Because he didn't call her. But when she went before him, he extended his scepter. And he said to her, unto you, up to half the kingdom is yours, Esther. And our father, because of our uh, the sacrifice of Yeshua, and that we've accepted it, when we go before his throne, he says, what do you want? He says, what do you want? And we said, we want to be with you. So we thank him. We look forward to what he has to uh, tell us for this uh, uh, Shabbat and so we rest in him we unplug from the world and rest in our father our king of kings lord of lords and soon coming redeemer to this earth again yet again he will return and take us and and, and we will start the millennial reign we will be working and so we're preparing for whatever our jobs are during that time. He's preparing mm -hmm. us now. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we thank him. Amen. Whole world is waiting. Sing the song of Shabbat. The whole world is waiting. Sing the song of Shabbat. Whole world is waiting. Sing the song of Shabbos, the whole world is waiting. Sing the song of Shabbos. I'm also waiting, waiting to sing the song. I'm also waiting, sing the song of Shabbos. Oh. Thank you.